Thank you to our four sponsors for supporting our podcast. Johnny Russell's Art Caterers and Milktown Pies, Alexander Grapes Law, Jez and Lisa's Spoonful of Sweets and SPE Furnishings. Links to their websites are available in the show notes and on our website. Don't forget to subscribe to get all the latest episodes as soon as they're released. everyone and welcome to the Housecast, Law House Cricket Club's own personal podcast. Just been brought to my attention that within three weeks time this podcast is two years old. Who would have thought it, how quickly that's gone, uh, all devised before lockdown, before Covid or anything else. Joe Martin and Adam Hope just getting together thinking there could be some banter here and there could be some memories to be made and I'd like to think we're doing that. I think we're bringing things together and people are enjoying it from the feedback we're getting. So uh, thanks very much for everyone listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like the podcast and tell your mates about it. So the season finished last Sunday, as far as the senior cricket, the first and second team went. Over the last couple of months, we've recapped on the, the games that we've played in certainly on the build-up to the cup final, which was obviously outstanding. So we're just going to recap on how the season's gone, um, getting a few guests on for them to talk us through it. It might take two or three episodes, this, but we're more than happy to do it. I'm sure the listeners are happy enough to go along with it. So we've got a guest on tonight with us, who I'll introduce in the next couple of minutes, but we've got a couple of our normal co-hosts on. Uh, Gary, Gary, how are you going on? Yeah, good to see you again, Jess. Yeah, we're all good here. Thanks very much. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, nice and sunny down there still, or is autumn on its way like it is here for us? Yeah, a bit, bit like you guys. I think it's, uh, it's yeah. That's, that's the end of it. Bottled down yeah. now a bit. I know it seems to be. I know Lanks were playing down at Somerset, weren't they? And that uh, I think they were the one before lunch today. Yeah, um, but the lights were on for most of the days that they played. I think it was uh, autumn's on its way. So great to see you, Gary, and uh, and thanks again for coming on. And we've got our other little star, Joe Martin, in the Joe Martin room. Nice to see you again, Joe. I haven't seen you for a bit. What have you been up to? Um, not a, not a lot really, Jess. Just finishing no? the season off and yeah, making sure all the coaching stuff's done and. Yeah, so not a, not a great deal, to be honest with you. But I have missed you, Jess, no. just so you know. Well, it, it, it's funny you should say that, Joe. I think we're getting this relationship up now where we do like to see each other at least once a week and have a little bit of private time together, sat in that <laughs> room or walking around the ground or whatever we do. But it has been brought to my attention. You've been doing some babysitting or some uh, sitting of some kind um, which has maybe neglected what you could have done like, done to, to help me out. Just tell us who you've been looking after. So I've been looking after Fred, Joe Beneducci's right. cat, right. Uh, who is <laughs> remar- remarkably overweight. Um, he's one of the biggest cats I've ever seen. Um, right. In fact, he was, he was really startled on the, I think it was the Thursday, when he'd right. come in from the kitchen. So I went to go and stroke him, and then right. he was very scared. So he tried to get up the stairs, but he was too, he was too fat, so he couldn't get up. <laughs> he kept falling on the bottom step. That oh, girl. no. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, I, I was Joe's cat. You talked about Joe, I was the cat. <laughs> oh, so how long did you have Fred for? A whole week. A whole week, yeah. And After a pizza diet. Just... Pizza and lasagna for a cat. <laughs> yeah. It's it's interesting that Joe, because I've uh, 
I've struggled for about that exact same week. So whilst you're busy looking after Fred, I've been living in my garage having COVID. Oh, no. Yeah, and where were you then? <laughs> looking after Fred. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Fred were all right. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, that's the main thing. That's the, that's the main thing. So that's great, that, Joe. Well done. Uh, I hope Fred survived and Rachel's thankful for it. I bet Joe weren't that bothered, was he? I bet it was all down to Rachel bringing yeah, him round. Yeah. Well, I think so. There was So there was some building work as well during, <laughs> during the week uh, yeah. where they were lowering the curb so Joe could drive his car out. Right. Um, and it's well established. I'm not a very practical person. <laughs> practical person but I kept looking out the window to see what they're up to and they kept and but they also kept looking back in so anytime we made eye contact I, I nodded my head and gave them a thumbs up to make them sure that they, <laughs> they, they, they were like I had some kind of appraisal of what they were doing I had no idea well, so you, were, you were like the ground the foreman of the, uh, yeah. the worker as well yeah. anyway enough of that the fans will be getting fed up of our uh, our bromance so, I'll just bring in, you've obviously heard who, well, I'm sure people would recognise his voice, uh, to come on to the programme for the first half hour or so, just to talk through the season. We've got uh, my youngest brother, Matt Hope, who's captain the second team all year, done a sterling job, you know, and it, it's easy for me to say, but you look at what other people have mentioned and the way the team has progressed. Uh, so, it, it has been a fantastic job that you've done, Matt. Uh, getting on the second team in the first season in the top division within the second team. Welcome, Matt. How are you going on? Yeah, really good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, all good. Uh, good. Bit of, one of one of the you know the 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 uh, first week after season finishes, it's a bit of when you get to my age, a bit of happiness and a bit of sadness. But I think the first few weeks will be a bit bit of happiness. I think. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. So that you, you finish the season on Sunday. You played on Sunday with the twos, didn't you? I know there's odd games where you've you've dropped out or Joe Benaducci's taken over for, for whatever reason. So you played on Sunday. How did Sunday go, Matt? Yeah, really well. We did uh, um, play well. We won. We got twelve points. Um, played against Todd. Um, bit of a bit of a sticky wicket. We ended up getting uh, under ninety thanks to Simi blasting a. Very, very quick 80 odd. Uh, and George Durkin getting back in the right. side uh, and ending up getting 50 odd, not eight, which was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I didn't realize George had got the 50 odd. That's fantastic. That's great. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, been, it's been tough. He's it, it, had a tough season by his own admission as George, and uh, he, he got an opportunity to play on Sunday. And yeah, and look, the player that we thought he was going to be. Um, Early on in the season, so no, it was yeah, it was really good to see that. Yeah, brilliant. And then young Simmy gets eighty three, so uh, you know, so that's a it's a great end to the season. As we all remember, going back, you know, we when you were young, you didn't like the season ending because it meant winter were coming, and you you know, it's a long time to the start of the season. So it's always good to get a decent score. I think Simmy's done well throughout the year. The year for yeah. you, Matt, is that fair to say? Yeah, he has, Jez, yeah, but he's, he's now called September Sim because he's peaked in September. I think he's got 220 runs in September. Um, <laughs> he's had a 90-odd, a 30-odd, not out, an 80-odd. Um, but no, he has, he's played well and he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's done well. He's, he's had another few scores throughout the season. He has done well, but in the last three or four weeks, then he's just been just been different class. He had He'd be Ali bowling at him. I don't know if he if he's older now and stuff like that, but he can still bowl and he just yeah. he just smash, just smash into all parts. Yeah. Uh, on, on a wicket that I get to open batting with and got a really, really good 20 odd and said, if, yeah. we get if we get 150 on there, we'll win by 30. Yeah. And, right. Brilliant. And, uh, oh, see, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's good. But there's, there's, been, there's been a lot from this, but no, oh, yes. Sim is at that age now. He's 20, 21 now. And, uh, Hopefully, I'm hoping that this season is he's got over 400 runs. I think, um, which is probably the best he's is 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 done in, in a full season. I'm just hoping he jumps on there because he, he he can play definitely. Yeah, and I think we well we did definitely. We had a, a short section within one of our episodes recently when he got his 50 in the T20 game, which was yeah, you know, it just proved really the way Joe Benarucci spoke about him. 
the way the fans were. And Joe Martin mentioned, you know, what uh, an achievement it was and how well received it was. So I think, you know, fantastic club man as well. And at that mm. sort of age, if he can kick on next year, that's fantastic. Yeah. Matt, just talk yeah. us through, you know, obviously not game by game, but it would be interesting to know, you know, some of the young lads who've come through, how they're coping with the extra pressure, you know, what is that new league like? Just give us a bit of a resume of the whole uh, season within the second team. Yeah, no problem. Well, the first, going before COVID, we got promoted from the second division and there was some average cricket in that, Jez. Um, yeah, but some, some, some really, really poor cricket. Uh, and we got promoted and we started off in, the, uh, in this season and I think we won one out of the first three. But it was a real eye opener to us. I think I touched on it on a recent podcast. Our first game was at, at Norden away, and with Dom Stewart, Fincher in the side. Um, yeah. And we got 170, 180, something like that. Had them 100 for five or six and got beat. And the year, bef- the year before, we'd have played, they wanted 120. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. that really did open our eyes. And I think. I think it shocked some of the some of the younger ones. It, it wasn't a problem for them to just mention me, Haggerty, and people like that. But even some of the twenty year olds, Charlie Bithell, Simmons, Tom Olsteads, yeah. Hero, they were all like, I have played cricket like this before. Yeah. Um so then you've got throw into that, you've got your Henry's, your George Durkins, your Tommy O'Robinsons at that stage, and it was it, and Dex Danny and all that were like, bloody hell, this 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 is this is a step up massively. Yeah. Um, so we started, and we did have Finch in a few games early on, and we won. Uh, I think we beat Darwin away, and I think the big one of the biggest turning points was in, in the year was the uh, the win at Walsden. We yeah. they've always been really strong. Um, yeah, we had again we had Finch in the side, but I, it didn't. It wasn't down to Finch that we'd won it. Um, and, and we beat them in a rain affected game, and people like George Durkin got twenty yards. I think Simi got twenty yards, um, and the, everybody chipped in, and, and, and we bowled all right. Tommy Robinson got a couple of early wickets. Tom Olstead ball, and it, I think that was the turning point of the year where we, I think they probably realised we can play in this as long as we, yeah, as long as we go out and and. Do what we try and do as a bit of a plan, you know what I mean, and 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 take on board what people are saying. Then yeah. we can perform in that, and, and and we did. And then we went on a seven game, uh, won seven on the bounce, which was just fantastic. Yeah. And beat some beat some good sides, you know, and played some really really good cricket. And yeah. you could just you could just see all of them, all every single one of them, not even just as 15, 16 year olds, all starting to believe and. Yeah, I don't think Bithell got a wicket till till June, middle of June, right? And was struggling and was bowling wide. So as was Tom Alston, and it suddenly just clicked, and they both got twenty five wickets in from June onwards, probably. Yeah. Um, so even so, not just the 15, 16 year olds that we've all got massive high hopes on. That that kind of player as well, along with with Simi and people like that, there's yeah. They've all they've all massively massively stepped up to it. Yeah, they have. Yeah, and, I wonder and there, week on week. Yeah, I do wonder there. Now you're saying it like that. When me and Gary, you know, played, you would tell, you know, when it was just the same teams in the the first team league and the second team league, that you could almost tell when someone's 16, 17, 18, if they're going to make it or not. But I, I, it's interesting what you say there. That you can still, because the first team, you know, the first division of the Lancashire League is, is so strong. To get in there, you're not going to be batting in the top five or six. So to get the runs, and I've noticed there, there's there's three players got over four fifty, and and then Agate is not one of them. He's got three hundred nod. So like you said, people might develop a little bit later than they used to. I don't know. I don't know what uh, if yeah, that's a possibility. Possibly. Yeah, or whether whether I think they've always had the ability, Jez, but I think it might be more. That now they um, they've got to work at it a little bit and Stan whether after the game on Sunday Stan come in and, and said a few words and just said you can notice the difference now you're taking your cricket, cricket a bit more seriously right right yeah so, and that yeah. and that's not I'm, I'm not saying that they don't go out on Friday Friday or Saturday nights I'm not saying that I, I think it's what Stan meant from 
half past 12 or 12 o'clock, whatever time we, we, we turn up and, and, and we start yeah. off, is, is taking it serious, seriously from them and listening to yeah. Yeah. myself and Agatha Ag- Ag- speak about what we didn't do right last week and try and making sure that yeah. we don't make the same mistakes over and over again. And it's so, yeah. and they have, yeah, they have, they've all, they've all grown into it, yes, they have, yeah. Which is really, you know, it's really good. You know, we're going back, we could go back to, you know, Proc and Paney and Ryan and you, Matt, when you were all young kids, it, it did get a bit heavy. And I know you took, you all took it seriously. But you look you look at the way that is now and how the different age groups, age bands are developing. You know, Joe Sharp, 455. Five. I mean, Henry, you know, Henry's still, how old is Henry now, Henry Cotton? 16, 17, 16. Yeah. He's got 440, I think he ended up getting. Yeah. You know, which is a great achievement when you're in that top That's league. You know, if you're in the second <laughs> division, smashing it everywhere, it might be, yeah, yeah 445 he got and, uh, you know, 26s. So that's really encouraging. Um, as far as that team spirit and their ability to push on to the first team, you know, Joel Sharp made his debut at the end of the season this year and got his cap. Uh, I know mm-hmm. Henry's played, you know, the old game and, and Dom Stewart, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, are you encouraged that there's players there, you know, if they develop the way they are, they will be regular first-team cricketers? Yeah, without without a doubt, yeah. And, and, I, and I, I'm still not convinced there's not going to be someone that comes out of that that surprises you. Um, right, okay. And by that, I mean... A bit of a whole set of a, a, a sim, uh, someone like that. Like, it, it, we, we've we, we've always looked, haven't we, at the ones that we've had? Oh, so I've always looked at the ones that we've had in the side, which were George Durkin, uh, Henry, and Tommy Robinson, and lots of things. They've done lots of things yeah. in age group cricket. We've had two, I think, two good uh, results with. Joel Sharp coming in, which has been just been a revelation. Yeah. He's got 440 runs in. in in nine games. And then the way we brought on, the next one that we brought in was Elliot Johnson. And we played at Aslindon, probably against, and Finch quartered when he played against them at home. And the same people who were bowling, that's one of the best amateur spells of bowling. I faced first team and second team. Right. So, so, so the, 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 obviously this was the, the different game. It was the same bowlers. In fact, there was one ball bowler, like Cole Lord, who bowled, who's played the first team. And I can remember the conversation that me, Joe and Stan were having about who do we pick next. And uh, there was a spot, I think Henry was playing for school. Oh, no, you're back in the three. And then someone was missing. And um, yeah. Stan said, well, what about Elliot Johnson? And, and, and mine and Joe's initial reactions were, we're playing against Haslund and Stan. It's the strongest all attack we've got. And Stan just said, well, yeah. well, well it, it, no, in fact, and Stan said, well, you probably can't play him and bat him at eight, nine or ten. So, yeah. Right, okay. Then. So I, I just said, "All right, then we'll 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 play and it can open the batting." And yeah, he caught their number three out with a diving catch at mid on that was it like a, a rocket to him about knee high. Yeah. So you think, and he's about two foot six. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's a right little dot. He's smaller than Henry. Yeah. And it, so he takes his catch as though like he'd been playing that level of cricket all his life, and he's a wicket keeper. <laughs> um, yeah. So I thought he's got something, and he goes on bats for. 25, 27 overs and gets 20. Brilliant. And it just, it just, just looked like he belonged. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think I yeah. played three games after that and did very similar in, in one of the games, got a bit of, got a bit of, got out early doors as you can for being an opening battery in one of the games. But just look at it, I think there's, there's more behind the scenes than, than, than the ones that we knew about it in, in April. Fantastic. Matt, I, I, uh, you touched on, you know, but we, who's who do we pick next, sort of thing, and, and performances on a weekend. I, how does it work these days with second eleven practice midweek? Because historically, you know, when you'd one net on bowlers run ups, sort of thing, on a wet Tuesday night, twos were lucky to even get a look in at, you know, on slip cradle or something. And you know, how's it yeah. working these yeah. days with, um, with, with the facilities we've got and then taking a good look and working on some. Bowling technique or some batting technique with twos. It, it, it's good, Gary. It, it's it, it's a little bit different with the twos because there's, there is quite a few of them at university who only come home at weekends. Your younger kids are there 
four, four or five nights a week anyway. But we, we always tried to do it. And it was this something we got from the third team. We, we always have Tuesday and Thursday practices. Thursdays are the more serious one that we try and do and, like I say, talk about specific bits and, and, and do different things. Um, but no, they, they all get... There's, there's, a, well, there's a six lanes, Joe, five lanes. Six. And six. And we mix it up. The second team going back in both lanes. I, I think how they do it now, they, they have three batters, three different lanes of bowlers, and they're all in it. So you'll have Joe in one lane, Francois in another, um, Charlie Bithell in another, Tom also said that it, So they're all mixed up, and then the batters just move from one lane to the next one. So... <clears throat> they all they all get a, 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 a quite a good a good practice and face a different different bowlers that so they're not facing with with respect for net bowlers or for lads like Kiro rolling up rupin and bowling who's a wicket keeper you know what I mean so it is quite a decent session. Francois is always there. Blaise has been great with them. He's he's took a lot of them onto the bowling machine or. They've gone to him and asked questions. So Blaise has worked with, worked with them as well. So it's it's a hell of a lot more organised. Yeah, yeah. yeah organised. And, and, and you get a lot more out of it now, definitely. And Brilliant. Yeah, it is. It, it is. But it, we still don't do things maybe like, well, I want you to bowl here and you run up and bowl in this, in this lab. But he's practising with the first team, you know, batting against them, bowling at them, so you can't run up and, and mess about you because they'll just... If you bowl at Johnny White, I've messed about you in danger of having your life taken off you. Uh, so you, they, yeah. they've got to really concentrate at it all then, you know what I mean? So it, it, it has. It's been, it's been really good, really good. That's good to hear that when you, you know, me and Gary were trying to get that going. I think Gary was, was you know, one of the first successful captains to bring in that, you know, to get that attitude into the practice. And then I look, Joe Martin, at when, you know, when you were extremely young and started winning things, the the team would then practice like I've never seen. It, you know, obviously you will agree with what Matt's saying, Joe. I'm not expecting you to to disagree with him. What what's your thoughts as now probably being seen as a senior player in the first team and seeing these juniors come through? Are we doing the right things? Is there anything else that could be different? Yeah, so I think that <clears throat> um with some of the so with some of the second team we have quite a lot of interaction through the APP that's set up. Um, yes. So some of those are on are on that program to try and get them ready for first team cricket as and when is needed. Um, so that's so that's really good and training is training is 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 good on a Tuesday and Thursday. But I'm always conscious of the of the fact that it can always be better. So I think right. one of the big things for for winter planning will be how can how can we make sure that next season our training and preparation is even is even better um, to help these players who have had a sniff of first team cricket, the likes of Tom mm. Robinson, Sharpie, Henry. Um, yeah. So how can those players? Be brought into the first team, ready to ready to play and ready to perform, but also yeah. give people like Charlie Bithell and Tom uh, Holstead uh, and Dirks uh, also that chance to see what they what they can actually achieve and what they can do. Um, yeah. So it's been it's it's always good. It's always great to see players come through. I think, uh, and I've got. And I've and I've already made predictions for next year of who I think will play a good part in the first and first team and in the second team. Um, so hopefully those predictions will come true. Otherwise, I'll look a bit stupid. <laughs> well, uh, but, well no, no it, more than even usual. More stupid. <laughs> yeah. Even more, even more stupid. Yeah. No, but I love that attitude, Joe. That you, you know, you, even now we're, we're singing the prayers. And it's all good news what we talk about and that's what we want to bring to the spectators and, and everyone else who listens to this, but you are still trying to improve it, which is also, you know, an extremely good asset for the club to have. And, and it, it goes without saying, and then within the next two or three podcasts, we're going to get Stan on to talk about the junior section, how people have performed. But again, there's that 
it's almost a conveyor belt of of talent that is coming through from. I mean, what are the youngest team now that plays? Joy is it under eight? Is there a, a? Well, the youngest team will be the will be the nines, but they are predominantly yeah. made up of. I think the one of the teams will be made up of seven year olds, really. Right. Um, Brilliant. And Brilliant. You know, you've only to you've only to come on a Wednesday to see eighty. Well, to see yeah. fifty five to eight year olds running around the pitch six till seven yeah. and yeah. another 30 eight to ten year olds who have only just started playing cricket and that's yeah. been, and actually that's been one of the most pleasing things to come out of this year has been yeah that we've actually got players from those two programs the all-stars and the dynamos that haven't yeah. that have never played cricket before yeah and they're actually now playing in teams yeah and doing really really well so that's uh brilliant Brilliant. Really good. And that's credit. And that is credit. And again, Stan won't mention this. Stan is not one to, to hog the limelight of the coaches and the volunteers that help out in those evenings. And, and it's not a crash anymore. It's not a, you know, drop your kids off and they can run riot and do nothing for, for two hours and, and then you collect them. So that's good. That's good all round. So, Gary, when you're properly retired and you, and you come back up here for the few weekends, we can sit there like, John Dean and Jack Hayes and sit back and watch all these young kids. God help them. Fantastic. I know, God <laughs> help them, yeah. God help them. You came up at not uh, a few weeks ago, Gary, after you'd been up to that wedding in Doncaster and you came on the ground, pleasing what you saw. And, uh, yeah. you know, entertaining game, I guess. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, we're an- it was another good game. Obviously, beat um, beat Clitheroe, um following on from the Worsley Cup, and uh, yeah. And, and again, it sort of ebbed and flowed for a bit. We were one chance, you know, we'll we'll be behind for a bit, and then uh, and then got us got a, got on top. So yeah, yeah, we're great. We're good to catch up with everyone uh, who, who who I bumped into and stuff. And uh, pity I couldn't stay a, a bit longer afterwards, but um, uh, I had a a, um, a family itinerary arranged for me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that was that. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, we're covering the whole of the, the north of England. So uh, no, good on you, Gary. Good for uh, for coming up, and I'm sure the next couple of years get rid of all this COVID business that we can have more and more of those meetups. Oh, absolutely. Matt, is there anything else around the second team? Anything else you want to mention of what's happened and what's gone on? And it's all looking rosy for next year. We're still in the first division. We finished fifth. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is extremely right. commendable. Yeah, I, I just hope that we let's say we can just take on to the next level. That the younger ones will be a, a year older. I know that's a, that that's obvious, but uh, I just hope now that we like say we the 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 old you call them the older men, but they the, they're only twenty one. Uh, yeah. And now can now build on what they've done they, done this this part of the year, and, and we, had, we had a good chat in the dressing room afterwards, um, and. Everybody was really upbeat and there was some really nice words said about how people had done and everything else like that. I just hope that we could now carry on next year. Again, the, the younger the younger ones behind the scenes, like to Elliott, and the next ones that are on, on the rank are all going to be another year older. So I'm hoping that the competition for places is, is, is even better. And and we can just, let's say, just make sure that we, that we compete. Um, and... There was not even even in the games that we, that we were getting beat, as and I had this conversation with with, with Falagate a week or so ago. Even the games where we've got beat, yeah, there's not many other sides or clubs that I've been to where I'd rather be in their dressing room than ours. Yeah. And even if they yeah, beat absolutely. us, absolutely, yeah, you know, what yeah. I mean, because of what we've got, you know what I mean. We, we, yeah. we, we yeah. might we might get beat against a side with six thirty five yeah. year olds in the team. Yeah, uh, yeah, old edit and everything else like that. But there's no, there, there hasn't been many times when I've walked off there and thought I'd rather be, I'd rather be in their position than I was because it, it is, it's really good. Yeah. And the big thing is, and I, I heard um, Agatha and Don Stewart talk about it on on uh, on, on Sunday when in the showers. So they didn't even like un- realize I was listening. And Agatha, even for Agatha and Dom said it's one of the only times that. They like every player in the dressing room, and they all get on, and the, the camaraderie yeah. is good. And, yeah. and Dom Stewart even said, even in that year that was the second division when we were playing Maverick's cricket, he said it's the first time yeah. in a while he was looking forward to coming to play cricket. And yeah. 
that's just because of everything yeah. that, 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 we've, that we've done and it's done oh, it's really good yeah I'm just looking forward to yeah. getting in yeah and that's the main thing and that's you know that's the main thing going forward and again you know what Joe Benarucci's put in place you know Paul Stanley before that getting that you know he's always been there the you know the low house we don't get many players coming in we don't get many players leaving um, mm-hmm. but there is that team spirit going on um, not putting you on the spot, Matt. Can you give us any updates of next year as far as captains, managers, or anything else, or is things still up in the air? Don't give anything away. You don't need to. No, no. I've spot to stand. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna do one more year. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm gonna try one. Yeah, give it one more year. Um, and with regards to obviously, we, we, we are going to have a have a chat with regards to anybody that's made it any. Uh, Noises about one wanting to come to the club. Um, I don't think I've heard any noises of anybody wanting to leave. So yeah. um, no, we, we, we'll probably do the same next year. I, you, you said earlier that there's uh, some games that Joe's played, and Joe's up for this as well. Hopefully now with Agate being there as well. I, I've only missed, I've missed for holiday, 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 COVID and weddings. Um, yeah. So no, we're hope, we're hoping that. Uh, we can we can get the next 15, 16 year olds through the ranks and, and we won't have to fill our sides with me, Joe, Agate and, and some of the some of the other the, the other older ones. So no, it, it's it is it's, yeah, it's looking good. Two looking points good. two Matt. important points you've in, you've glossed over, Matt, uh, which I think you need to um enlighten us on. One is are you still allowing um Players in your team to use hair dryers after showers <laughs> in the in the Good changing point, room. Garrett. No, it, it's it, it totally banned, Garrett, and he's been fined for it every week since. Excellent. Good to hear it, Matthew. Yeah. I like a bit of discipline. Yeah. You know me. Absolutely. And, sec- Absolutely. and second point, second point would be where you're going for the end of season trip. Oh, this is a quite funny. I'll just tell you this quickly because there's obviously some of the younger ones on there. So we, we we're, we're going to go to the races. We've done our fines and his collections and we've raised uh, we've got about 800 quid in the pot bloody hell uh, so um, so there's been some some serious fines poor Henry Cotton's come top at fines I don't know how that's happened <laughs> but he gets fined this is what they're like they're just it, it's fierce he, he gets fined every week for having a sister better than him at cricket <laughs> right 50, 50p every week he gets fined for that right um, so so we're doing that so we, the year before the year before COVID, we went to um, to Clitheroe and we didn't let any of the Henrys or George and all the younger ones come. Yeah. They were just on a, on a pub crawl. So we've got them younger ones in there and I, I spoke to the parents and uh, I, I think it was Joe, Joe was saying at the time, I said, look, this is what we'll do. We'll we'll get a minibus, we'll have some breakfast, we'll go to the races, we'll come back to Burnley and then we can drop them off and they can go home you can pick them up. So because... I don't want to be responsible. It's hard enough looking after ourselves, no man after four, four, fifteen year olds. Um, and, Joe, and Joe said, "Yeah, we're quite right that Matt, because when we went to Clitheroe, the three older ones, Philagate, we went out about twelve o'clock. Philagate, we went for six o'clock news. <laughs> I, fell, I fell asleep in a pub in Clitheroe at half eight, and Joe Benedetti rung Rachel at half past nine. He didn't where we were." <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so we, we, we're definitely going to make sure we, 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 we get back to Burnley and let the fifteen-year-olds go on, so they don't have to see us in that state. But no, I think we we, 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 we talked about it and we want to go to the race. I think. Excellent. So, well, I'll, 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 yeah. that's yeah. great. That's great. Good on them, Matt. Thanks ever so much for that. For you know, giving us that insight. We certainly enjoy it on here, and I'm sure a lot of the fans will. Will will want to know what's happening. They go and watching the first team everywhere, and it's great to see that the second team are doing so well and is is in good hands. So uh, thanks very much, Matt, for for giving us that uh, that insight. We're going to move on and we're going to discuss around the first team cricket now. Uh, Matt, by all means, feel free to stop on and contribute when you can, and and, and if you want to, just want to talk through how things have gone through the, the last quarter of the season and then any thoughts around the main part of, um, you know, of the whole season. So if I can just yeah. welcome on to the, the podcast, we've got Joe Benaducci and Ben Heath here. 
Hiya, Joe. How are you doing? All right, Jez. Good yeah. you. Just had a high-powered executive meeting at my house. Yeah, right. What were you making pizzas for us? <laughs> Disney Plus on its background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Disney Plus on. Uh, no, I'm great. Joe, top of my head, by the way, Jez. It's his fringe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for audio, Joe. I was going to mention it, but spectate, the, the listeners can't really uh, see what's going on. Go on, no, Matt, no. defend yourself. No, it's not. I, I, I forgot my laptop, so, uh, so I'm, on my, I'm on my phone and my arms are aching. Keep lifting it up. <laughs> You're not watching porn, boy. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, Diane. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, Joe. I know you've had a few discussions with yourself and, and Ben and, and MD, and if you can impart anything later, then feel free uh, to pass it on to us. Ben, lovely to see you. Well done this year on the, uh, the Cup final victory. We're going to have a good chat with you now and hopefully get a few bits off you as how the season's gone and, you know, interest everyone else, everyone who's going to listen to this, all us fans, etc. How are you going on, Ben? Uh, yeah, thanks, Jez. Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, it's been a good season overall, I think, but I'm, I'm ready for a break. I'm sure you know when you get to the end of the long season. Yeah. Your body's been... Difficult and tired since I came back from my injury, so I am. I'm ready for a good yeah. Game. Yeah, you you do. You deserve it, and you know you. Joe Martin keeps us updated, and you know we can see. You know you probably came back a little bit earlier than you, you maybe should have done. It you know it was quite a, a bad injury that you got, and it's good to see that you battled through it, and you know and led by example for the rest of the uh, the rest of the team. Ben, if you can just give us, and obviously, Joe, you jump in and, and help out if there's anything that you want to to tell the spectators. Just give us a, an overview of the season, how it's gone with the pressure around the training regime, you know, COVID that, that's there, you know, the performances. We know we've got a great team. So just give us an overview, Ben, of how the season's gone. Um really, around the league side of it, without going into the Cup. I'd like to go into the Cup separately, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine, Jess. Um You know, overall, I, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed how we've done in the league. Um, and there's been a lot of pressure around it. You know, that's all yeah. set off, start to do at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, and we were playing catch up very early on. Yeah. In this day and age, with the two divisions and, and the top division being being very very competitive, yeah, it isn't the way. Uh, if I'm being brutally honest. Yeah. So you know we have trained hard, we have tried hard, of, of course, um, and you've got to throw into the mix. We've had more more no results than than everybody else. Yeah. Um, but we've, we've thrown in there some some really poor performances at certain times, but also put some runs of wins together that I've been really happy with. It's just the consistency that you need more than ever in this league now. Yeah. And to be yeah. thereabouts at the end of the season, just like Burnley have done. Yeah. Yeah, Ben, exactly right. And I, I don't want this to come across, you know, maybe my question was a little bit closed in, you know, the disappointment of the season. Personally, I think it's been a great season in the way that you've all um, contributed and the effort that you've all shown. We've just had a great conversation with Matt, which I know you two will enjoy listening to, of the positive sides of how well the club is is looking for, for the short-term future and the long-term future. But they've also, you know, this league now, both the second team and the first team, in the first division is a is a tough tough league, and I remember going back. Me and Dooch had we had uh, it was one of the podcasts, and Dooch brought a, a great point up. I think I was disagreeing with him about one season. I don't know going back. I don't fourteen, fifteen, or, or whenever it was, uh, and with Joe Martin involved, that you you lose ground in the first you know two months of the season. It struggled. You struggled to make it up. Do you think that's harder now than it was? going back 
to either, you know, 2004, 2005 or 2014, 2015? Do you think that's more difficult now? Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah. But, and I don't, I don't want to sound disrespectful to our uh, fellow Lancashire League clubs in, in division. Yeah. But if you go back to 2012, 2014, uh, and I think, yeah. I, I think I've heard you mention this on, on podcasts in the past years, yes, that you used yeah. to look at the fixtures and think, well, right, OK, without being disrespectful, we'll get a win there, or, or we'll yeah. pick the points yeah. there, uh, and then we'll get back on a roll. Whereas now you look at yeah. that division, OK, Cook, Cone have struggled this year. Uh, yeah. The, the rest of the 10 sides or 11 sides in the division, you're looking at the fixture. Yeah. You need to be on the money every single game. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a great point, you know, Crompton have had those points second off them and, and we don't talk about those sort of things on the podcast, those are the decisions that are made. But like you said, Middleton, third from bottom, Rochdale, Tomwood and Ramsbottom, you know, the great just, 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 there. just to add, Jez, Jez there, sorry to butt in, Middleton and Crompton, both right, right. beaters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, and they're finishing the bottom three, but deserved as well. They're not free results, are they? It's, you know, it, it's you know the games I've watched it is so, which is great for the Lancashire League. You know, sometimes you know we we might not we might have come out of it the wrong side, but it is great for the Lancashire League. Dooch, what's your you know as as cricket guru, stroke manager, stroke making Matt Stanley's tea tonight? What what's your thoughts about the way that the way Ben's talking about the league this year? I share his view, Jez. I think it has been a, a slightly disappointing year, but there is some context to it. You know, we, we've lost yeah. one more game than Burnley. Yeah. 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 One more game and we lost. Yeah. It says we've got we've got beat by Middleton and Crompton who are in the who are in the bottom three. Now I'm not saying if we'd have won those games, we'd have ended up winning the league because no. we were 30 points behind Burnley, but we are we did only lose one more game. And we Yeah. 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 Um so, and you know, even within that, there are other mitigating circumstances. I'm not making excuses, but of course, we had the situation with the COVID break mid-season, which yeah. wasn't ideal. Um, no, no. The Stephen, the pro, missed some some games because of his hundred commitments, which you know, again, is not an excuse because we knew that was coming before the season started. Um, but I don't think we're a million miles away. I, I genuinely, no. we, we got. You know, we did get a bit of a thumping at walls than away, but a lot of clubs go there and get and get thumped. Um, yeah. But on the whole, what would you take finishing six and winning the Wales Lick Up? Um, I, I'm right. Are you asking me that, or oh, I'm, asking, on I'm, I'm asking the Law House boy, yeah, fans, yeah, all yeah. that time without winning anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying we should be satisfied with sixth place, Jez. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're, we're better than that as a, as a club. Yeah, yeah. But if we, if yeah. it's, a, it's a consolation prize, if we're going to pick where's the couple. Yeah. And can I just say, Joe, I, I, so I'll try and answer for the, the fans. Yeah, that day was absolutely outstanding. You know, and everything, what everyone's gone on, what every, everyone's gone through in the last two years, you know, whether it's personally, whether it's cricket, whether it's enjoyment, whether it's being with your mates or whatever, that stands out as being, you know, a, a fantastic day, evening, things that went on. The circumstance of it all went on. So as a spectator, yeah, I would be satisfied. I really would. So, I, you know, I, I didn't, want it, didn't want it to sound like I was disrespecting the Worsley Cup or disregarding the Worsley Cup in terms of how good of an achievement that is when I'm yeah. thinking about the season being a slight disappointment. Um, I think any Lorice captain, knowing what the club's been through in its long history, would snap your hand off at Silverware at the start of the season and I'm no different. Yeah. Really. yeah. Those, those two Worsley Cup wins that I've captained and been involved in, um, Will, will be with me forever, as will all, all yeah. those, those especially. But I suppose what I'm saying is at the start of the season, um, the league separates the men from the boys and that's what we judge ourselves on over a period of time. So, you know, the, the worst Absolutely. is still very high on the priority list, 100%. Yeah. And as we said, I don't think anyone would think you disrespected it, Ben. You know, because the spectators for that day out was just fantastic. You know, the, it's it's that shorter period of over four or four or five games, 
So it was fantastic. Yeah, but we all fully appreciate what you're saying. And, and I'm sure you will be back next year and you will be as strong, if not stronger, to fight to uh, to win the league. I mean, I don't know what, what Joe Martin, what, what, what would your assessment be? Um, you know, without going into the intricacies of, of what's going on in the season, how do you feel it's gone as a player who sits on the fence all the time and don't commit yourself? Um, I think some people would say it was good, Jez, and some people would say it was bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, the, it, I think it's been frustrating more than anything, to be honest with you. Yeah. The lack of consistency has been difficult, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, especially playing for this is my tenth season or eleventh season. Yeah, and for the large proportion of that, we've we've been very very consistent as a team. But this year, we've yeah. there's been freak results that just don't usually happen. So yeah, that's been the, that would be my assessment of it. To be honest with you, yeah, frustrated. Yeah, but what a good day for the Worsley Cup. Yeah, it's yeah. Just... yeah. From, yeah, go on, Matt. Go um, on. Yeah, from obviously from a low rise fan, you know what I mean, and also someone who's closer to to, to, to most with regards to to the first team and Ben and and all the players. I think it shows how far we've come that we're talking about possibly being disappointed by the season we've had. Um, yeah. you know what I mean, and and, and yeah, don't get me wrong, I know Ben's disappointed. I, I bet every single one of them is disappointed. I'm disappointed that we haven't won both. But there are certain things that we, you've just got to try and put it into perspective a little bit. Yeah, we've two, two more rained off games. Um, the losses that we, we we don't think, not that we don't think we should have, because we got beat. You know what I mean? The games that we go into, the two we talked about, Middleton and Crompton, they're going to happen. You know what I mean? It's it's that, the, the, the level of the 12 clubs is something that we won't, we we haven't seen for a long time because it's that yeah. much of a, a good standard. You're not getting, as we talked about earlier, the four or five teams that struggled. Yeah. And they were, then there were, there were four or five different teams throughout the different periods where you think, I can turn up there with a side that Low House had in from the 2005-2015 and win without yeah. even trying. That, that's long yeah. gone. That's long gone. Yeah. And I think it's, I think that just shows a long way where we've come as a club, as, as everything, as a first team as well, that we, we look about thinking, are we a bit disappointed that we've only won cup and finished sticks? I think it's, yeah. I think it's good because we all are, and I'm not saying we should be happy with it, and I'm sure Ben's not, but it, it's good to have that that headache as a problem, isn't it? Rather than thinking, Christ, what we're going to do next? You know what I mean? Without a doubt, without a doubt, and it, that, this is where. You know, Ben and he, the team around Ben, the, you know, the, the small team around Ben, you know, that, you know the Matt Stannis, Joe and the senior players deserve a lot of credit in the way that they manage this and the way that, you know, the Teddies weren't thrown out, Ben, at the end of the season. You know, I, I know that the cup final was, uh, was, was looming, so you're always going to get people playing. But you look at our side, you know, I'm just looking through the, the figures there, you know, Paddy Martin. What an outstanding all-round cricketer he is to have in your side. Joe, probably the best wicket keeper in the league and continues to create records and break break records and, and look like, you know, a real professional wicket keeper which keeps the team going. You know, then you and, and Johnny Whitehead, you know, top class. You know, you're in the top batters within the league and Francois, you know, and then you've got the pro coming in. It, it, it's... It is all credit to, to keeping all that together and performing the way you have. Um, before we, we started recording for Matt's second team podcast, we started talking about what it's like to play now and, and you know, the, the pro coming in for his first season after being in county cricket. Um, again, Ben, I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want anything to come out, any controversy controversies that that people don't need to know about. But I'm really quite comfortable where Stephen's gone about the business this year and the scores and, and the way he's been. Are, are, you, are you feeling the same? Are you comfortable with him his addition to those amateurs? Uh, yeah, 100%, Jez. Um, yeah, good. I completely agree with you there. He's got my... Yeah. Support. 
Uh, and I think he's got the other 10 lads support as well in the dressing room. Yeah, um, yeah. He's been fantastic to play with, fantastic to learn off. Of course, yeah. there's always room for improvement in everybody. Um, yeah. And he's no different. You know, he sees himself as one of us very early on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he he's expressed uh, in, in his own way that he doesn't, think about what he's earning on the day he's there to play cricket because he enjoys playing yeah well, that, that'll do for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. without a doubt it, you know it's uh, you know you can see that and you know let's touch wood that, that we progress them from there Gary have you any thoughts around you know what Ben said there and we're all sort of looking at you look at those players that are playing there and you look back to some of the signs that being you captain and they're slightly different I guess yeah, I mean, I would have had, I mean, we didn't have tablets in those days, but I, I would have had to scroll down about five screens to find the first law ice batting uh, in the averages. <laughs> so, so to yeah. see pa- Paddy, um, you know, sort of top law ice bat- in average wise, and, then, and Ben and obviously Johnny Whitehead right up there, um, you know, it, 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 it obviously shows that we've got um, all the individual talent um, that, we, that we need in that respect. Um, and as Ben knows, and Jez and, you know, and Matt and myself, and, you know, always trying to pull Joe as well, always trying to pull that together um, to get the best performance on the day is, is, is sometimes what is the, I'll say the hardest thing, but you don't always know if you're going to pull that off or not. And, and the, the better captains yeah. will, will do that consistently and turn those into a league winning sides. Um, yeah. So, so that's great to see. I mean, there were two, just two points there uh, on what people have said. Where that was a good, good point that Joe was making that rhetoric question about are we happy with was and my, my instant reaction was you know no because we were the start of, I listened back to the sort of season preview podcast we did and we were all sat here really bullish about we've got a good side a great pro we're looking at top two and one of the cup finals you know and, 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 and all this sort of thing so when you think about it in that way what we were thinking about from the start of the season just the, the end result of six I think you know we'd like you said we'd all be probably disappointed with, with six, albeit it was very tight. And I think we all said that at the start of the season. This is going to be a yeah. really, really tight season and a, an odd win or a couple yeah. of defeats and you're going to drop three or four places like a storm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just one thing, look, being a bit of a stat or Ben, just looking at, the, at those, I noticed that we were, our bonus points, um, we, there were only Cone and Middleton had fewer bonus points than us over the season. It, we, we got a, I, I can't remember every result, but I know we did take a few drubbings where we didn't get close, you know, no batting points and things like that. Is it is this an area that you you felt we, we fell short on or is it something with just circumstances of the matches and things like that? <laughs> Yeah, no. Once, once I made a, decision, a, a position, a positional difference in the team, in you know, in, in the um, in the leagues, it were. But if that had been a game against a Burnley or a Walston or a Clither or something, then it could have, you know, there's, it's a twenty-four point swing, isn't it? Well, yeah, definitely, um, and it is something I'm aware of, and that, and that I've looked at uh, and been left scratching my head at times, thinking how and why, and and there's been definitely games where we perhaps should have bowled teams out. Uh, and they've walked off eight or nine down and not got very many. Um, but I do think it's just been a mixture of a bit of luck at times against in, in certain games, like Sunday, for instance. You know, we're trying all sorts by the end, weren't we, Joe Martin? <laughs> uh, I've even brought myself on. Um, and, and you've got Pazza, who, who's, got, who's probably gone at one and over in his fifteen. It has then ended up going at nearly two and over because in his last three or four overs, he's sending it up, up into yeah. the, trying to buy a wicket. So we've been a bit unfortunate yeah. in some games like that. Um, but there's been, like you've just pointed out, there's been other times where we've had drubbings and got nowhere near. So a combination of, of three things there, Gary, I think. But, you know, drubbings, a bit of luck, and probably sometimes you can be in a game, can't you, and just think, this game, we just need to win at all costs, and it's yeah. Yeah. getting through this inning, yeah. placing as few as possible, and then you look at it yeah. hindsight, three or four weeks down the line, and think yeah. we probably bowled them out there. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think probably going out to win the game, prepared to lose 
a few bonus points to the chance of getting a 10 or a 12 pointer. He's always going yeah. to stand you in good set. If you think, oh, well, we might get six out of this, or, you know, a few bonus points out of this, you'll end up getting nothing. So, you know, the positive approach to cricket probably, and, and, and obviously watching from afar and listening to others, I think is, sounds like it's been the right approach, right attitude throughout the season. Like I say, just things haven't fallen our way on occasions. Absolutely. One of my biggest moments yeah. is um, having played for a long while now, he's, he's coming up up against a team that's nowhere near you in the league, but uh, are playing in a manner that stops you getting the bonus points. Yeah. yeah. Going out yeah. there and trying to get as many runs as you can to try and win the game. Yeah. I, I, I do agree, Gary, for exactly what you said. I remember playing with you, Gary, and you were the instigators in. So, yeah, there's a bowling bonus points, which, you know, which are obviously vital. But I, I like the way that you play this year, Ben, in that, you know, we the, I can't remember who they were against. There were two games where we could have bat, battered out to try and get an extra point or two, but you didn't. You wanted to go for the total to get the 10 points. And I would rather see that than getting those extra one or two points here and there than, you know, the 10 points is vital, you know. So there is that. So I like the positive way that this year's gone in approaching the cricket as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think Walsden away springs to mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm being honest with you, we probably got that a little bit too much that way and, and got it wrong. On yeah. The, and we were chasing too many than than I felt the track uh, yeah. would have allowed us to, but yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes and we ended up yeah. 80 short and didn't get a point. Yeah. That's yeah. One, one fixture that springs to mind straight away where we went out yeah. fairly bullishly, shall we say. Yeah. Yeah, to try and get you to, to try and win the game, you know, instead of looking for the bonus points. But I think, you know, over a career to go out to try and win to get those ten points on the bonus point will work, will work in your favour more than it yeah. doesn't. Um, mm. You mentioned there, uh, Ben, around the track. How talk us through the, the the pitches now with the first divisions up and running, and you know, are they uh, are they different or, or over the last five years that you've seen? You know, you're the one who's played on them. Are they are they any better now? The whole league. Um, I'm not so sure, Jez. I'm, I'm not so sure. No. Uh, it's weather dependent, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Like uh, on most grounds, including our own, we 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 yeah. we don't handle. And Stan, will have to forgive me for saying this, but it's not a personal attack like he thinks it is most of the time. But we don't handle rain or showers very well at Law House anymore, or yeah. ever. Yeah. We just don't handle it well at all, and it sort of ruins the preparations for the week. Um, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say overall, Jez, I've seen a massive improvement, just weather depending. No. I mean, we put, we played in the LCB Cup or the Lanx Knockout and we played at Ormskirk and that was like, you never seen anything like it for a club. Yeah. It was yeah. completely different cricket than to what yeah. I used to do. It, it was rock hard, it was fast uh, yeah. and it was uncomfortable opening the batting for a short while. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're, you're a product of your environment and, and my yeah. It's been completely different to that, and I'd like to think that our our team and we should we play on the tracks that Ormskirk play on every week. We would become accustomed to fast ball win like we did on that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. You know, from the outside of looking at I'm like going back to the real old days. I just it seemed as if the the pictures did appear to be better, and the teams certainly the home teams are seem to be more of a home advantage now. The then they're knowing their own pitch and they're knowing how to score and where to score on it. Um, but that could be an illusion for me because of you know there's some of the poor pitches I thought I thought we we did play on. Joe yeah. Martin, is as a stumper, what what's your thoughts around the pitches? Are they are they similar for when you first started? And uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I've, yeah. I've I've got no real understanding of pitches. So no, no, um, no. Whether they're good or bad, you'll just yeah. Yeah. The ball, the ball hit me. Whether they're good or bad, so yeah, the, yeah, you'll stop them with your, you'll stop them with your pads all day, won't you? <laughs> yeah, on my chest. Yeah, yeah. frequently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way, yeah, brilliant. That uh, Dooch, you've you've been busy making notes around uh, Ben's future. Is there anything you want to bring up and anything you want to discuss with us, with the fans? Oh, you'll have to wait and uh, see if there's an announcement about Ben's future. Right. Weeks okay. Months. No. No. Yeah. We, no there's no. Months. There's no changes afoot there. And um, yeah. We just already sort of trying to put some plans in place for next year in terms of 
who have we got? Who, who if there's any yeah. any outgoings, um, that'll that'll sort of occupy us all winter, really. Yeah, brilliant. No, that's great. Um, before we we wrap up on this one, Gary, anything you want to you want to mention before we finish? And we are going to have just so you're aware, Gary and 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 Ben and others, we're going to get Stan on for the roundup of the thirds, fourths and the junior cricket just to talk through some, you know, some good youngsters that are coming through. Matt's gone through the great state that the club is in for the, you know, the late teens, early 20s year old. So we will be covering all that. Gary, anything you want to to bring up or to discuss now before we uh, conclude this episode? No, just to say, Jez, great to see a full season's cricket, um, albeit quite disjointed. We're playing catch-up matches and, and, and things like that. Fantastic, even though watching it from afar, to see the Worsley Cup game in, in, in its yeah. entirety on, on the stream um, and obviously get up there for a, a brief visit um, shortly afterwards. And just, you know, like hearing, um, you know, more detail on all these podcasts and stuff about goings on at the club and the characters and, you know, what people are working hard at and being successful in. And um, and again, you know, from what Matt said with the, with the twos coming coming through and the bright bright future there, then, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh, it makes me miss it more, you know, week on week, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, like we said, once we get all this out of the way, we can hopefully... You know, get to meet up more often and and get around and watch watch some of the games. Thanks, Gary. Absolutely Thanks right. for coming on. Um, so if I can just just conclude tonight's episode, Ben. Thanks ever so much. You really deserve a lot of credit. The the way you've handled the the senior players, the way that the the club has gone, how professional it's getting, and the training and everything. And so you know, so many congratulations for the winning you know, of the Worsley Cup and, you know, fingers crossed for next year. Hope you win too well. We are looking at having more podcasts on here. I think they'll be more a little bit lighthearted and getting some guests on where we talk about either history, funny stories. Joe Martin's in process of organising the Christmas podcast again, where he has to chair. How many village idiots are coming on this year, Joe? I mean, I, I hope it's about 12, I think. But 12 village just, idiots, just yeah. so people know, Shez will be returning. <laughs> Shez will be coming back on. Yeah, so that's the number one village idiot. So we will keep going with the podcast. If anyone wants to, you know, give us any suggestions of any other guests that they'd like us to, to try and get on, then we will, of course, um, try to do that. But thanks very much. Thanks, Ben and Dooch. Anything you two want to contribute before we finish this um, this episode? So I just thank everyone for listening for this season, everyone who has commented around the podcast, positives, which are 92%, and negatives, which are 4%. And then you've got the 4% from Joe Martin that would just sit on the fence. Uh, thanks to everyone for listening. And if I can just leave you all, with a little extract from our sub-pro on the, the Worsley Cup final, who wants to just say a few words. So this is Ruhan explaining how fantastic he thought that the club was, uh, the club is, and how he enjoyed that day. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hi, guys. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. I uh, went on the weekend again. Um, I just want to say again, thank you very much for having me over. It was a wonderful day to be part of, and... Congratulations with a very, very successful year. Um, I know, don't know how long cricket season is for you guys. Yet still, our cricket season, the league stuff is done now. I'm um, just got the county stuff left on Friday, Saturday, Sunday this week, and then we're done. But well done on a very successful year. Um, have a very good Christmas, which is just around the corner, and then hopefully everyone stays safe and everyone has a lovely time with families and friends and just again love the place and hope that everyone has a brilliant brilliant time off from cricket now till next year and then see lower house win everything so yes guys from my side thank you very much and have a lovely time cheers <laughs> Oh,
Hans, the Sailor Hans.